I wanted to talk a little bit about what I look for in a multimeter and I'm going to use this multimeter as my example and so in a sense this is going to be both a little bit of a tutorial or maybe one one man's opinion and uh, a mini review of this uh, multimeter which uh, I bought on Amazon for just under $34 it's called the ACE GMET multimeter. Uh, it also has a model number JXM 8000, but I could not find anything, any reference to that model number online. But I can find some references to the, uh, the letters that I uh, gave you earlier. I don't know what this, if this is supposed to stand for anything. You can, the, the, the closest English uh, phrase I could think of is a segment, maybe talking about like a line segment or, a, or whatever. Uh, often these are uh, bizarre names when they come from the Far East. Uh, a lot of times people don't even know why they thought of that. But anyway, uh, this meter came with this uh, instruction manual, two spare fuses, these little... Uh, protectors for the uh, meter end of the test probes, two test probes, and a uh, thermocouple. So we'll look at the features of this a little bit later after we've talked a little bit about a meter, but let me say that when I look for a multimeter, I start with where am I going to use it? What kinds of things do I want? And the reason is that one of the first considerations in my mind after you uh, decide where you're going to be using the meter is safety. And safety comes in three forms. First is protecting you the second is protecting the meter, and it comes with this little blue uh, cover, which I've taken off. And the reason I took it off is, is this. I find that these little uh, rubber covers hang up on the bench and kind of get in the way. And since I plan to use this meter on a bench like the one it's on now, I am not as concerned with having this. Also, this bench is about two feet or so off a carpeted floor, so I'm not really worried about dropping it. Uh, if I were working in an environment with concrete floors, especially on a ladder, I would have left this on. Also, the, the other safety factor you need to think about in terms of your in environment is what kind of equipment are you going to be working on? And that gets down to issues that are probably best addressed by zooming in on this part of the meter. You'll notice right here it says CAT 3 1000 volts, CAT 4 600 volts, and then it has a max of 750 volts and 1000 volts. What these CATs refer to is the relative protection the meter provides, CAT3 is the, the sort of standard best today. There was a CAT1. I don't think anybody makes CAT1s anymore. There was a CAT2 and then CAT3. But even with CAT3, what people noticed was there were circumstances, particularly when working on high voltage, like 440 volt uh, transmission facilities with uh, heavy transformers and motors and things of that sort, that you could get big transients that could come through the meter and uh, shock or, or possibly even kill the user. And so CAT4 is really intended for that purpose. So I wouldn't buy a meter today, a new meter, that wasn't cat, at least CAT3, 
and best is cat 3, cat 4. So uh, remember that even if you're working on, say, a, a 440 volt line or, say, a 220 volt line, but you're working with inductive equipment, big motors, switches, uh, relays, that kind of thing, the transients can, can be several thousand volts. So the fact that this meter is rated to 750 volts and you're only using it on a 220 line doesn't mean that you are protected unless it also has this cat rating that will protect you against transients and by the way the 750 volts is RMS and so let's uh, switch gears now and get out of the <laughs> preaching safety mode though I will tell you this is not a sufficient safety lecture for you to grab a multimeter and go out into the world if you are not experienced in electrical work and you do not understand safety procedures and what all these things mean, including category, uh, rated equipment, and so on, don't do this yourself. Before we look more closely at this uh, new multimeter, I wanted to compare it to a vintage multimeter. This is a Simpson 260. It's an analog meter, which means that it reads on a, an analog scale. This, of course, is a digital uh, meter, although I'll show you in a minute. It does have some, some analog uh, uh, in its display. But the main thing I wanted to show you is the test probes. Notice that the test probe here has uh, a bare... tip. This one does not. That's done for safety reasons. There have been, uh, by the way, about a hundred people a year die of, uh, from, from electrocution. And of those, about a third die because they touch, directly touch uh, an electric line. Now there's nothing you can do about designing meters that'll, that'll, uh, help that situation. You just got to teach people to stay away from electricity and sometimes it's for other reasons. But the main reason they changed the probe style is there was a problem with people connecting the test leads to AC and then unplugging or never plugging in the other end of the test probe and then coming in contact with the test probe. So they they put this, what's called a sheathed connector, around it. One reason that I point that out, and we'll come back to the idea of analog a, a little later, is these, this meter and many good modern multimeters sense where you have probes plugged in. So, for example, if you don't have a probe plugged into the proper current position, it won't let you measure current. Uh, that's another feature which protects the meter more than it does the user, but nonetheless it's another feature. But the main reason I brought all this up isn't just to emphasize safety some more, but also on meters like this that have sensing uh, connectors, you need to make sure that these are seated all the way in or else the meter won't work correctly or it may work intermittently. So let's turn this meter on and uh, do some tests. I'm going to set the meter to the voltage position and you may notice it reads DC here and if you want to change that you hit the selector, it goes to AC, DC. And now I'm going to connect a 9 volt battery to the test probes and you notice it reads 9.662, but notice at the top there is an analog-like meter reading, or, or display, I should say. Now, the, uh, the main thing I want to emphasize is that these 
yellow-orange parts of the dial are the auto uh, ranging and the rest of this is fixed ranges. So if you prefer auto ranging you can do it that way or if you prefer fixed ranging you can do it that way as well. It's one of the things I like about this uh, this meter. Now let's take another look at that at that uh, analog display or that that uh, analog light display at the top. I'm now going to put a volt and a half on the uh, uh, AAA cell 1.539 and notice that there is a very small deflection on this uh, uh, and the one thing that I would have liked is if they had labeled this display at the top with the range that it was operating on but it doesn't. It's always zero to a hundred percent. So just be in, uh, be aware of that. Okay, what are some of the other features of this meter? Well, it has a lot of uh, it has a uh, a flashlight. There you see it. And there you don't. It has a hold function. It offers a number of uh, features that a lot of other multimeters feature, including voltage, resistance, capacitance measurement, and so on. And I'm not going to do a full review of actually checking this against a really accurate meter like the, uh, the Keithley uh, 2015 that I have, which is very accurately calibrated and reads out to I think it's six or seven decimal places. Uh, but what I am going to do is talk about a few things that this meter has that many other meters may not have. Obviously, I look for the voltage ranges, and this meter will go down and will read, according to the specs, a tenth of a millivolt or 100 microvolts. It uh, will do ohms and has a 100 meg ohm scale so it's not quite a mega but it's a but it will go up to 100 meg ohms and I have tested that it's got a very wide capacitance range though I, I uh, caution you that if you really want to test capacitors get a good LCR meter the it also measures frequency and it of course has the the normal uh, beeper mode for, for uh, testing continuity. It also has a non-contact voltage uh, sensor and it will also measure, I think I said frequency, it will also measure temperature as well. That's down here in either degrees C or degrees F. And of course amperage, voltage, uh, AC and DC voltage and, and so on. But I, before I close this, uh, I want to mention this VFC. The, uh, the, the instructions in the manual aren't very clear on this, but this is a feature that Fluke introduced, uh, and I'm not sure if they invented it. With a lot of motor control circuits these days, the AC line is brought through a controller that converts the, the power to a pulse width modulated signal. This allows you to vary the speed of a motor uh, and without significantly affecting its torque. So in other words, it, it doesn't lose power, it just slows down. But if you try to use a conventional meter to measure on the motor side of those controllers, you'll get erroneous readings. Fluke, in their Model 87, and maybe in some others, but it started in the first time I saw it was in the Fluke 87, introduced a low-pass filter that you could engage in the AC mode. And so I'm going to go here to AC, and then I'm going to hold this down and you notice that I don't know if it shows up very well that 
VFC shows up in this uh, upper part of the display. And what that tells you is this low-pass filter has been inserted. The low-pass filter gets rid of all the high-frequency harmonics that tend to cause the erroneous readings and focuses the meter on the low frequency, which is what is actually producing torque in the motor. So, Fluke introduced this. They copied it again in their uh, Model 89, and by the way, there's a real good uh, Fluke uh, application note on all this. It's on. You can uh, download online if you look for it. Uh, just look for variable frequency controller multimeter, and uh, I think you'll find it. Anyway, it's a, it's a Fluke application note. But the fact that this meter has it makes me feel quite good that if I were an electrician working in a, uh, an industrial environment, of course, first I'd put on the, uh, the boot in case I dropped it. Second, I would be comforted by the fact that it's a full Cat 3, Cat 4 rated meter, but also I would know that I could use it on these new motor control uh, circuits on the motor side. Now, if you're on the line side of those controllers, then you turn that off because there you're just re measuring regular AC. And by the way, this meter is also a true RMS meter, and so uh, it will read the RMS value. I hope this gives you some idea of the kinds of things I look for in a multimeter and why I bought this one. It seems to have a lot of the features that I really like. It has this analog-like display, which if you're doing things like alignments, you find very useful and much more intuitive than trying to figure out whether the, the digital values are going up or going down. And in certain modes, like the AC mode, you notice it has a dual display. It not only displays the, the voltage, but it also displays the frequency. So, once again, not a full review, but kind of an overview, if you will, of the ACEG MET multimeter. I'm going to be working on the, uh, the, the electronics workbench some more, and when I do, I'll come back and do uh, a little more of an overview of multimeters in general, including vintage multimeters and modern ones, vacuum tube voltmeters and things like that. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a nice day.